Right, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is part 10, I believe, of our series here. So um, let's get right into it. There's a few little bugs I want to fix. Um, the first one being, um, originally, we were adding the seed to the seed. Why? So we're going to delete that for now. And what we're actually going to do is every time we add it here um, in the input, right? It's in the dirt input. Instead of the seed, we're going to add it to ourself. Uh, so self dot add child, and then we'll do that same thing for here. And then there was another bug with the seed. So if I look it up, corn in here, um, the has seed was erroring. And so that's how we fixed that. Um, originally, if we added it and it finished growing and it got here, it wouldn't be able to get parent has seed equal false. Uh, hopefully you noticed that and you fixed it. Um, if not, that's okay. Um, I did it right here. So in our dirt, you just change the add child to self. Um, I believe there was one more thing. Um, let's test it and see what happens. So if we play, we can add. Ooh, what is going on? Why can't I add anything? Interesting. Um, dirt. Let's go back to main menu. Let's save and load. Play. Oh, interesting. The position is not right. What is going on there? I think I can just take those out, actually. So stage. <laughs> Let's um, save and load again, just so we don't error. OK, nice. We added it. It works. Let's add one more plant. Um, let's close it and then load it to make sure it still works. All right, there we go. We still have the three plants. Um, one more thing that we have to do or change is, as you might have hopefully guessed and done already, we have to be able to match it just like this. So in our dirt, um, every time we loop in between our pot, we're going to check or we're going to match the, not the stage, but the seed. And then we're going to match it with corn. So we can put that in there. Hopefully that works. Yeah. And then we can take this, copy paste, and then we can add tomato. Um, let's make sure that I'm not writing it wrong though. So tomato, here we go. I want to make sure that we write it consistently. Correct, at least. Okay, awesome. And then we can go into our dirt, copy paste our tomato, put that into here. And then instead of corn here, we're going to be making tomato. Yeah, and we can just keep plant one. The variable name does not matter. Um, so now when I play, I'm going to add a uh, tomato, and this should work. Awesome. We have two tomatoes, because one of them, I, th I believe, was saved as a tomato already. So if I add one more, test it one more time. Ooh, interesting. What is going on there? There's a little bug there, but that's OK. <laughs> we'll ignore that for now. Um, we'll, we'll keep going on what the original plan was. So. The next thing we want to do is be able to harvest our actual plants. So um, in our, I'm going to close all this. I'm going to open our game script. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new array that's going to be similar to plot. It's going to be, what are we going to name it? Um, harvests. Yeah, we'll name it harvest. And it's going to contain the, almost the same thing as plot, but it's going to have different dictionaries, or it's going to have different things in this dictionary. So I'm actually going to take this, copy it. And in our world, when I, nope, you know what? Let's open up the corn. <laughs> and in here, when we do body entered, yeah, let's do body entered. We'll connect that to our corn, and we'll do, if body dot named equals player, and just to double check, we want to go to our player and make sure that his name is player, 
and in our corn, we will basically add this dictionary to our array, except we're not adding to plot, we're adding to harvests. And then we're also going to change the actual values of the dictionary. So what are we gonna want? Um, first, we want name of it, which will be corn in this case. Um, what else? We will want the number of them. So we'll do count. And we'll do what else? And we can add a bunch of different things. Let's say one more thing we'll do is um, not edible, consumable. Consumable. There we go. And so we'll make this one true. We'll change this one to one. And then this one's corn. Um, for the count, what we're going to want to do is. Essentially, what we're going to want to do here is it's going to be a different um, structure to the plot. So in our harvest, we're going to want to essentially stack certain things onto other things, right? So let's say I've harvested one corn. I want to now add to a corn, right? I don't want to make a new dictionary with a new corn, right? So what we're going to do is um, here we can check if game.harvest has that already. So if game.harvests, I believe what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this together because uh, this is an important process that um, you should get used to doing. So basically, okay, so my thought process, and this should be your thought process as well as you're coding and learning, um, is my question to Godot is, does Godot have a way to check if an array contains a certain dictionary, right? So what I'm doing, open this up again, um, whoops, is I'm going to go to the dictionary Godot and just search up Godot dictionary on YouTube, on Google, and it'll pop up the documentation for it. This is the latest one, so I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to check the, I'm going to scroll down to the methods, and what I can check is all the methods. And I see right here, it says has. So we can check if a dictionary has a certain thing. So we can use this. So now what we can do is go back here and use that. So if has, the way they used it is in game harvests. What we're checking for is if corn and game harvest. However, this might not work because as you can see, this is a dictionary, not an array. So this is an array and not a dictionary. So what we're gonna have to do is for loop through it. So for loop through, um, for loop i in game dot harvests dot size. And then we'll check each one. I believe that is how we do it. What we'll do is um, say print has corn. And we'll take this out. And then we'll do else print doesn't have corn. OK, um, it's going to be a bit annoying to test. So actually, what we'll do is we'll take the timer and we'll actually just change this to 1. And we'll try it. All right, there we go. <laughs> Oh, this is really interesting. I think it might not be working. What is going on? Time, wait time. Oh, it is growing. Just not at the right time I want it to. Time equals time. Time left, time left. Hmm, I'm not sure why it's not changing actually the time, but either way, um ah the q free okay um what we'll do is actually take this out for now the q free because we don't want to destroy it anymore so um, go right here okay here we go okay well we didn't get to test it but either way this should work um so i'm going to copy paste this again um and what we'll do is we're going to basically so we looped through the array. We've checked if this harvest, if corn is inside of this harvest, 
And then if it does, what we're going to do is go back to their, our thing. I'm going to go to our method, and I'm going to check if it has a get um, method. And wow, look at that, it does. So it has a get key. So it's very similar to the has, but it's going to get something for us um, because I don't know where it is. So um, we're going to do this at the game harvest dot i i um, equals actually we don't have to use the get method, <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is game dot harvest i at the count plus equals one. There we go. So essentially, what we're going to do, ooh, interesting, unassigned. OK, what we'll do is take this out, and we can put it over here, variable count equals in harvest count plus equals one. Um, OK, plus equals one. And then we can do count. How about that? All right, how about that? Later to that. Oh my gosh, OK. All right, what we'll do is we'll actually just set it to zero or set it to one, sorry, for now. OK, there we go. So we're going to add into our harvest. We're going to make it equal to one. Um, if it's not, what we'll do, so we're going to do else. And if it doesn't exist, we'll add to it. So we'll just do harvest plus equal um, corn one and true. OK, um, now let's Let's test it one more time. So we're going to plant our tomato. And then we're going to wait for it to grow. Um, while I do that, I'm going to put this on the side for now. Yeah, I'll put this on the side for now. Um, for the harvest, I'm wondering if I can do this. I very much doubt I can. OK, maybe I can. Who knows? Maybe that'll work. Let's try it together. Let's actually save it so it saves to the current game. All right, so it shouldn't disappear if I hit it, which it won't do anything, I guess. Let's see if it's even. Oh, it's gone. That's strange. Where'd it go? Um, corn, corn GD. Interesting. Okay, let's. Uh, I need to print something to test it. Okay, this is my bad. I need to. Um, let's print game dot harvest in the end to see if we added it. You know what I just realized? I need to add the corn, not the tomato. I'm very silly. That's why the tomato wasn't growing. OK, there we go, player, and it did not add to anything. So there is a problem. Um, if corn in harvest i, then we do this. If it's not, then we add to it, and then we print it, and there was nothing printed. So why is that? Um, let's see. Ooh, it might not have been going through it at all. OK, let's. Save and load. Let's add one, two, three, four, five. Go into it. OK, I understand what's happening. OK, so what's happening is the size is 0, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually make it equal to plus 1. No, what we'll do is first we'll check. No, you know what? OK, I keep going back and forth, but we'll just add the current corn to it. There we go. There we go. So now we have one in there at least. In fact, you know what? Let's change this to tomato. So now that I don't have anything, except I'm going to want to slowly save and load. And then 
do that. Add one, add one corn. Going to hit it, and there we go. It added it. So we have our tomato, and we also have our corn. It added in a weird way, but that's okay. Um, now let's try adding one more and see if it'll add to it instead of making it equal to one. And it did not. That is very strange. Well, it kind of works. <laughs> um, I think the problem actually is in our corn, we need to queue free after. Queue free. Because it hit twice. That's why. Let's load. The array should be empty now because um, it's not saved anymore. Or we're not saving that variable yet. So we take that. OK, there we go. We added it. Yep. Take it, take one more, and we added twice. I'm not sure why, but that's OK. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll figure this out next time. Either way, we have a slightly working system where we can now add to our harvest. This is the beginning of our inventory. Um, I want you to, another piece of homework I have for you, is to try to figure out the bug for this. So at the moment, it's adding several pieces of corn. And I want you to figure out why. Um, I can actually tell you why. And the reason is somewhere in here, in this line. Um, yeah, I'm going to end it here just because I want you to try to figure this out before the next video. Um, if you guys liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, educational, please let me know. If you thought you don't like the format, that's OK. Um, comment down below. Let me know what I can improve on. And I will do my best to do that. I will see you guys next time.